Enjoy the revelation of God's promises in the dividing of God's word with his servant Reverend Tidy Ekrakina. I'd like you to know, when God was going to do something new, he could do the first one. The new beginning that we have is that once we were sinners, but now we are righteous. Hallelujah. Once we are on the, on the other side with the devil, but this time we are on the side of God and he lives in us. Praise the name of the Lord. CGMI Peniel Media, serving you the undiluted word of God to bring about total restoration. Do subscribe and click the notification bell for updates. Also remember to like and share. Hallelujah. The blessings of Nigeria are just about to be exposed and to be a manifested. Because um, my prayer is that God will grant wisdom to our leaders to be able to handle the situation. That is my prayer. And as we pray along with it, I love Nigeria because Nigeria is my country. It doesn't matter the other place. Things are working so well. I'm sure at a point in their life they had these experiences will come out better and stronger in the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Let me just announce that all um, women leaders, all women leaders, I have a meeting at the close of the service, all women leaders, uh, le women in the leadership, I have a meeting with all the leaders at the close of this service. So please take notes. And all Agapites and the youths, I will talk about this later. We should be here. Today is your outreach. You should not be missing in that exercise. I hope I'm, I'm understood. You should not be missing in that exercise. It's very, very important. Praise the name of the Lord. The time is 4 p.m. We'll emphasize that later. Praise the name of the Lord. By the grace of God, we have the word. God has a word for us this morning. And he has prepared a vessel to give us that word this morning. So it is with Jesus' joy that I request we we'll receive the ministry of Reverend Ernest Idahosa as he comes to share the word of God with us this morning. Come on, give the Lord a clap this morning. Let's remain standing as we pray. Almighty and everlasting living God, we thank you for bringing us together once again to be blessed. We thank you because you keep blessing us. You keep pouring your blessings upon us. And again, you've announced to us this morning that you are not true in blessing us. Thank you, Lord, because we will manifest. We will be, Lord, in heaven, the living blessing of you. In the name of Jesus, we ask you to speak to us again and again. And restructure our hearts and our life by the reason of your word. Do not entertain us, but transform us. Do not challenge us, Lord, but change us. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Please, you can have your seat. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I said, Praise the name of the Lord. You're welcome to church this morning. I want us to celebrate the choir. But if the soul are standing again and again this morning, thank you for those prophetic declaration that God is not true in blessing us. Praise the name of the Lord. The last week, one of our elders in the church said we should also admonish the brethren. He said we should say this to the congregation. And I said it in the course of Wednesday Bible study. This is also another opportunity again to see. He said we should let you know that no particular moment of ministration is insignificant. And at the moment of transformation, the turning point in his life has been some words that he caught during preaching. He said the preaching would just be going on and the word would be said, would be spoken. And he just keyed into it. And before you know what is happening, there is always a turn around, a testimony to that effect. So he said, we should let our brethren know that there is no moment that is insignificant, especially when the word of God is going on, that we should take it to heart. Praise the name of the Lord. So I said that so that we can uh, 
fight against destruction. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This morning I will be sharing briefly on, on the topic, Godliness is Profitable. Godliness is Profitable. Godliness is profitable. And my main text is taken from 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. We'll read verse 7, verse 8, and verse 15. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Praise the name of the Lord. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. He said, but refuse profane and old wise fables, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. Verse 8. For bodily exercise profited little, but godliness is profitable unto all things. I'd like you to say after me, say godliness is profitable unto all things. Hallelujah. Continuation. He said, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. Let's look at verse 15. He said, meditate upon these things, give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. In Mark chapter 8, verse 36, a question was asked. He said, what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his, his own soul? That same quotation is in Matthew chapter 16, verse 26. Find it in Matthew, Matthew 16, 26. He said, for what shall it profit a man if he shall gain? In other words, another way to, you know, to present this scripture is to say, it is not actually all gains that are gains. Hallelujah. Not actually all profit, everything that appears to be profit, that are actually profit. But thank God that that scriptural verse added the word I am. He said, if he shall gain, paraventure the devil allow the person to gain, of which I know the devil will not allow the person to gain the whole world. The enemy we have read about in scripture will not allow one man to gain the whole world. So in other words, there are actually things that appear to be gain that are not gains. There are things that actually appear to be profit that are not profit. Are you hearing me? There are things that appear to be profit. There are, there are, there are, there are things that people enjoy momentarily. But on the long run, it actually turned out to be something negative. So this morning, we are looking at the subject, godliness is profitable. My days in the university, one day I was talking to ESCO that I served with. I said, there are some of us that are here. But eventually, Jesus Christ appeared today on earth physically and said, well, my children, I appreciate you the way you have lived your life. You've kept your life, you've kept yourself holy and pure. You've not defiled yourself with anything. You've been so decent and every other thing. I appreciate it. But I just came to announce to you that uh, there's no longer hell. There's no longer heaven. No reward, no punishment anymore. There is a change in plan. I said, how many of us would go to him and say, or maybe we'll just look at Jesus in his face and say, you should have announced this thing to me many, many years ago. Oh, God. I've lost so many things. There are things I'm supposed to have enjoyed that I didn't enjoy. Lord, you should have announced these things. Like 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago. Sometimes, believers, we look at ourselves and we act as if godliness is detrimental to a successful life. I've heard some people saying, well, I, I think my life would have been richer than this if I am, if I wasn't a Christian, is a lie from the feet of heaven. My life would have been be better. I think I would have acquired a lot of material gains if I wasn't a believer. It is a lie from the feet of heaven. You know what the enemy is telling you? That being godly is detrimental to success. And godliness is not detrimental to a successful living. The 
portion we read this morning says, it is profitable in the life having this promise, this particular life, and even in the life to come. There is also another category that believes that everything that Christ has for us, has for us, you know, is in heaven. That every blessing, everything that we need to enjoy, that we need to share, is only but in heaven. It's just in eternity. That after we are saved, we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and as our Savior. That every other thing, see you over there. That that's the summary of our faith. Yes, there is benefit. Yes, there is blessings. That those blessings are just for heaven and heaven alone. There are blessings of eternity. There are also blessings here on earth. Shout hallelujah. So it is profitable. Serving God, what does it mean to be godly? It means to live for God. So in other words, living for God is profitable. It's profitable. Hallelujah. It's profitable. It pays to serve Jesus, a songwriter said. It pays to serve Jesus. He said, I speak from my heart. It pays to live for God. It pays to live for God. Sometimes, when we look at the situations that is around us, we are tempted to reason like David. He said, Lord, why is it, you know, you know it looks as if the, 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 the wicked, they prosper. It looks as if the wicked, they flourishes. And they just commit those particular offenses and they go, with, they go without any uh, uh, punishment. David said, I envy the worst of the wicked. He said, I almost went up the edge until I go, I went into your sanctuary and I discovered their end. Sometimes we feel like that. In my days in school, I had a C in one particular course. Agricultural mechanization. And I was bitter. I was bitter. I was just complaining. We were going to the teaching and research farm on my way going, I was complaining. I said, how can Opepa give me a C in mechanization? I said, I read that course very well. And I know every question is set. I answered them very well. I knew because I consulted a lot of past questions. The only thing I know I missed was the field trip. So I was complaining. I said, I know it was because of that field trip that Opepa penalized me. As I was talking, there was a colleague of mine behind me. His name is Alex. He looked at me and said, Pastor, I bow for you. He said, Opepa knock F for everybody. Give you C. You are complaining. He said, I bow for you, oh. Pastor, I bow for you. But if I knock F for everybody, give you C, you are complaining. So there are some times we look around us, it just look as if, you know, everything around us is, you just ask yourself, don't you think it would have been better? I know how much I was getting in a week from that particular means, from that work. I know, I know, I know how to cut corners before I met Christ Jesus. Maybe by now I would have been counting the number of houses. Beloved, it is the trick of the enemy. Praise the name of the Lord. Living for God. He said it pays off. It's profitable. It pays off to live for God. It pays off. And the Bible says it's profitable to all things. Say after me, say all things. Not some things. And sometimes, and maybe as a man, you just look at yourself and say, ah, I, don't you think uh, it would have been better if I had you know, taken this particular route? The Bible says it's profitable to all things. Godliness is profitable to all things. Not some things. Not some things. It's profitable to all things. The Bible says it's having the promise. The word there, having the promise, is a present tense. It's not actually a future tense or maybe a past tense. It's what a present tense. That in other words, in this particular life, there is profit. And the profit is not just restricted to some areas, but it is to all areas. There are some few areas I want to share with us this morning that I know that godliness actually, you know, ensures. Godliness guarantees all those things. Praise the name of the Lord. And the number one I want you to know this morning is that godliness ensures protection. Hallelujah. Godliness guarantees protection. Godliness ensures protection. Testimonies abound of men and women. Testimonies abound of young men and young women, one way or the other, that even their acts of godliness have fetched them protection.
protection. Praise the name of the Lord. Godliness, godliness, godliness. It guarantees protection. For everyone that is living for God is valuable to God. Everyone living for him is valuable to him. As a matter of fact, the Bible says in Romans 5, 8, it said it is even when we were of no use to him that he died for us. When we were of no use to him. Sometimes you look at your life and say, well, like the young man we met during the evangelism, we offer him a tract. He look at the title of the tract and say, reconcile. <laughs> he asked me a question, who reconcile? I said, Jesus reconcile. He said, reconcile to who? I said, to God. He said, as I am now, am I reconciled? I said, yes. He said, I'm reconciled. And my life is like this. <laughs> he just, he shook his head like this. And returned the trap to me. I said, no. But the joy of it all, he accepted Jesus at the end of the day. Praise the name of the Lord. You are valuable to him. I am valuable to him. The Bible says that we are joint here with Jesus Christ. You know what a hair is? A possessor. In Acts chapter 9 verse 4, Saul, on his way to Damascus, received a message from the Lord. And the message says, he says, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Jesus Christ was the one talking to him. And he asked a question. He said, who art thou, Lord? He said, who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the priest. See, biblically speaking, there was no physical contact between Jesus Christ and Paul. The people that Saul was persecuting were the post-resurrection followers of Jesus Christ. They never had a, Jesus had a physical meeting with Peter and so many other apostles. But Jesus, when he was talking in that verse, he said, why are you persecuting me? The implication is this, whatsoever man is doing to you, they are doing it to Jesus. When you've decided to live for him in your neighborhood, when you've decided to live for him in your office, when you've decided to live for him in your family, and you have been marginalized. Whatsoever man is doing to you, they are not doing it to you. They are doing it to Jesus. They are the one. Jesus is the one that is being persecuted. When somebody stands on your way and said, any day you ever talk about this Bible here, I will make sure that you are sacked, you are fired. Any day you ever take a step of going to the church, that ends the marriage. You know what they are doing? They are doing it to Jesus. It is up to Jesus. They also, godliness guarantees protection. It guarantees protection. We are valuable to Him. I am valuable to God. I belong to God. Say to yourself, say, I belong to God. I belong to God. Try it one more time. Say, I belong to God. I belong to God. Say, I am not to something. I am not to something. So, in case somebody has ever looked up to you and said, But in Christ Jesus, you are man to something. And that is why I know that all those who have ever looked at you and said, Who are you? They will one day come back and say, How are you? Praise the name of the Lord. My father had 20 children, 14, three wives. I'm not number one, I'm not number two, I'm not number three, I'm number four. And I was the first to give my life to Christ to receive Jesus. And you know what my senior sister said? How come you are the one who says what goes, what stands in the family? You know why? Because I am the highest. Hallelujah. And when I told my life to Christ, when I received Jesus into my life, my younger one called me. The second child called me. The first son called me. Because I confess Jesus. 
But today, the same Jesus is confessing. Do not give up. Do not give up. Do not throw in the trouble. Do not give up. Hallelujah. Sometimes it looks as if it's not paying. Some years, ago, some years ago, I read a book authored by Dr. James Dobson. And the title of that book is When God Doesn't Make Sense. If you see the book from afar, the only thing you can see is When God Doesn't Make Sense. But when you go close to it, they now crest on the corner, holding on to your feet. When God Doesn't Make Sense. There are some times that Christianity doesn't make sense. There are some times that following God doesn't make sense. Hallelujah. There are some times that serving God doesn't make sense. When you expect your biological parents to behave to you as a father and as a mother, and they are doing otherwise, there are some times that following God doesn't make sense. And that is why we don't preach the salvation of follow Jesus and he will turn into a millionaire. Accept Jesus because he's your savior. There are people who have used that as a base to bring people to Christianity. After one month, two months, and they did not become millionaire, they left. Am I saying God cannot turn you to a millionaire? He is much more than that. He can do that for you and me. Praise the name of the Lord. But that's not what godliness is all about. Godliness means living for him. On the mountaintop and in the valley. When it is right and when it is rough. When things are going smoothly. Anybody can sing. He said, I sing because I am happy. Ether water. He said, I sing because I am happy. I'm glad. I sing because I'm anybody can sing when he's happy. But the question is this how many sing when they are not happy? Love. Godliness guarantee protection. Because we are valuable to him, we amount to something wonderful. Godliness guarantees protection. It does. It does. There is a, a, an account of a woman in Luke chapter 8 verse 48. The account of the woman with the issue of blood. The Bible says, when this woman touched Jesus, he said that the, the, the flow of blood ceased. And Jesus Christ looked back in verse 46. In verse 46. Can you please, please take us back to verse 46? Verse 46. He said, and Jesus said, nobody had touched me. Eh? Jesus said, nobody had touched me. He said, somebody had touched me. Before this woman touches Jesus, she was a nobody. She was a nobody. Let me tell you, according to Leviticus, this woman falls in the category of those lepers that when they are moving even when somebody wants to come close to them they will keep shouting unclean, unclean, unclean so that you don't come close to them she was a nobody but in verse 46 Jesus Christ said somebody had touched me for I perceive that virtue is gone out of me when she touches Jesus she became somebody she became who? somebody she was not a nobody anymore she wasn't a nobody anymore. He said, somebody touched me. There is no, you cannot, you cannot have somebody in Christ and he's a nobody. No one is in Christ and he's a nobody. He said, somebody touched me. Somebody touched me. Beloved, do not look over the act of godliness, kindness you've shown over the years and regret. And ask yourself, what has it landed me? Sometimes, somebody you may have rendered one help or one kindness, you may have shown one act of kindness to. You've shown godliness before I mean, to the person. And the way he's paying you back, he's paying you back with a coin that you never expected. And maybe because of that, you, you just sit down and say, well, I've taken the decision. Enough is enough. No. Don't take a permanent decision over a temporary situation. The Bible says that whatsoever we do, let's do it as unto God and not unto man. If you are doing it as unto Idahosa, a day will come I may not even remember to look at your side. And that is the day you will become discouraged. <laughs> Hallelujah! If you do it as unto man, a day will come that the man may not even, he may be appreciating everybody and he will forget your name. And you will look and say, this man just
just forget my name upon all I have done for him. Upon all that I have done for him. No, scripture says we should do it as unto God. And that is the reason I have a slogan. And it has become a family slogan that those who doesn't care who takes the glory, they will go places. Praise the name of the Lord. When we were talking with the prayer band, the intercessors here some time ago, I was telling them, I said the, the intercessor does not have a title. Nobody can call you intercessor Alex. <laughs> so your name just travel like that. <laughs> it doesn't have a title. It is you and I that always say Apostle Paul. In the Bible, it is Paul the Apostle. Because why it was not a title is a responsibility. That your job and my job, your effort and my effort, your godliness, it just looks like a salt in a food. When it is there in the right proportion, nobody asks a question. But when it is less or it is over, who cooked this soup? Why you pour salt for this soup like this? It's like the foundation of a building. When the foundation is okay, you use sand, earth to bury the foundation. Nobody asks. But the moment you see a crack on the wall, you go back again and say, who laid the foundation of this house? Who is the engineer? That is how godliness is. The Bible says, we see, it said, whatsoever a man sow, he will reap. He wasn't talking to a believer. That letter was not written to unbelievers and me. It was written to believers. Whatever a man sow, he didn't say wherever he sows. He didn't say wherever he sows. It's possible you sow here in Penny Chapel and you go to somewhere that has no name in Lagos, but you will definitely reap. There is protection. You are alive. He said, where is the protection? You are alive here. What happened is what you know. What would have happened, you don't know. Do you know how many people that went in, that went in through this COVID-19 this year? Have you sit down? Just sit down and take a count. People close to me, I know one, two, three, four, five that passed on. You say, where's the protection? You sleep. You think it is your alarm on your phone that wakes you up? No. The human being that I know, I, I, I can judge from my own very life. This life is like a breakable plate. It is not necessarily old age that destroys the breakable plate. Carelessness. Many a times we are so careless with our lives. So many a times we are so careless with our health. When we are supposed to sleep, we don't sleep. When we are supposed to eat, we don't eat. We break the laws of nature. But you see, because we have broken the laws of nature, you see God coming through for us, suspending the consequences and allow us to walk in health. Godliness, godliness, guarantee. I was talking with a brother who lives in the heart of Kano. He said there was a day, you know, one of those days that that particular fight broke out. He said that very day, he said, Pastor, those are hours with. He said it was the biggest Bible of mine that I carried that, night, that day. And they were looking for the Christians. I was with, he said, the biggest of my Bible. I, you know, the way I so dressed. And you know when you are in your midst, you, are, you, look, you look up. He said I was with the biggest of my Bible that so conspicuous was for them to easily see. He said that the Okada man carried me through them. I have such testimonies too. How I, you know, travel through Okenia. Sometimes when the fight in Okenia, we just, every time I went through Okenia, is either the fight is just ending and I'm arriving, or I just went through and they start. From Kogi State, I was coming to Ekoman for my master's degree. Every morning, I'm always on the road. Every week, I'm always on the road. Sometimes it is arm robbers. They said they just finished robbing now. And I will appear. <laughs> when you are in the center of God's will for your life, you become immortal. You will remain immortal in the name of Jesus. Until the time that God said, come home, my son and my daughter. Your life. See, there is nothing, no power will question your redemption right that will succeed. He said, I know the church they say that they go. He, he, he husband are even pastor. The woman are pastor. I bet now church then they go. Why did he say now, now, so, now sickness? Now you just go catch the woman like this. That will not be your testimony. That will not be your testimony. Because why? Jesus Christ has paid the price. And because he has paid the price, it is appropriated in your life in the name of Jesus. Don't play down on it. Don't be discouraged. That is it. We are somebody because we are the children of God. In the book of Ephesians chapter 5, the Bible described, it gave illustration. Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 25, 26. 25, 28 to 30. Jesus Christ, no, the Bible was giving an illustration. He said, the relationship that exists between the church and Christ is like the relationship that exists between the husband and the wife. So he was telling husband, love
love your wives, even as Christ loved the church. And in 28, he now went for that to say that, look, the wife is the bone of the husband, is the bone of his bone, and the flesh of his flesh. And the Bible says that the church is the body of Christ. Invariably, we are the bone of Jesus' bone and the flesh of his flesh. Are you getting that illustration? It goes again to tell you and I how valuable we are to him. He will never allow his resources, his investment, to be wasted in our lives. See, God has invested a lot in you. He has invested a lot in me. I told my uncles when I went in the university, I said, God will not just put all these things in you. Eh? You look back at your experiences, how you started from the children's department. You went to the Sunday school department, and now you you know, in fellowship, you are this, you are that, in the church, you are... God will not just invest those things in you and allow you to go and sit down behind one table and be collecting salary at the end of the month. He is not a waster. And virtually all of us who labored in the fellowship then today, we are still in his vineyard. God doesn't, he doesn't waste experience. God doesn't waste experience. When you look back, look back to what you have gone through. Those mess. God has already converted them into messages. Maybe you are not seeing it. The mess is already a message. Eh? The same condition that happened to two people and they reacted in it. The same sun that melt their eyes is the same sun that had in the clay. So those things you've gone through in life, we've gone through in life, is part of the way God shaped us. When I was in school, one of our sisters lost the father, sister Eunice Opola. And I sent the sister's leader, I said, please go and console this our sister. They went and they came back and said she refused to be consoled. He said, President, please try and see the sister by yourself. The way she's sobbing and she's mourning, we are afraid that she might end up doing something else. I went there. I related with her from experience. I know how I felt when I lost my father. Do you know before we left there, she smiled. She started laughing. When we came out, my sister really called me and said, President, what did you do? I said, I related with her from the experience I had when I lost my father. God doesn't waste experience, brother. God doesn't waste experiences. You see those things that you have gone through in life? It is a message. Don't allow it to be a mess. Praise the name of the Lord. There are some of you that are here this morning. There are some of you that are here this morning. You grew up in a home where there was lack and want. You grew up in a home where it was so tight. And as at the time, the Lord will take you to the place of your wealth. Do not use that same experience negatively and relate to other people. It came to a time that we were just living with my father. You know, when my mom, my mom was no longer there, and we were now the third wife was the only one there. We will labor from morning to twelve. Children, you work from morning to twelve, one o'clock. We leave the house very early in the morning. We touch light and go to the farm. No breakfast. So one day, we have harvested the vegetable and bringing it back again to the town to go back again the second time. So getting to the house, we just quickly we run to where the gary is, where the boat where she get the gary. Use hand and pack and put in the water and quickly. Not knowing that my stepmom, our fingerprint was on top of the gary, and we could not even erase it. We didn't know. As at the time we got back home, the woman just went there like investigator and called my father, Terry Messi. That's my senior sister's name. If where you book my guy in your children touch this gary. And my dad assembled the three of us. Jesus. It was hell on us that day. Because she grew up in a home where there was lack and want. She, 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 she imported that same thing. If you know, have you ever gone through some negative things in life, it should create a mentality to, in you that will help you relate positively with others. I told my wife when I had no job, when Kogi at the time I resigned from my job, I said, you see this wilderness experience we are going through? I said, learn everything that God wants you to learn. So that at the time we are through with it, you will have a lesson to pass across. Don't learn the worries and the pains. So that when God turns again, you will not end up treating high blood pressure with the money that God will give us. Why worry? Why worry? Thank you. When you read Psalm 91, you see the, the protection that God has outlined for you and I because we are in covenant with him. When you read the whole of Psalm 91, praise the name of the Lord. For the sake of time, another thing that godliness guarantees is promotion. Say promotion. 
Hallelujah. Promotion. It doesn't come from the east. It doesn't come from the west. It does not come from the north or from the south. Promotion comes from on high. When you look at the life of Joseph, somebody said a way to even summarize the life of Joseph is from P to P. Eh? From pit to prison. Pit to prison. Prison to palace. Like that. I told my wife one day, I said, if Joseph was to live in our generation, if Joseph were to be in our days, we would recommend him for a deliverance. How can you just tell somebody your dream and the next thing they are looking for a way to kill you? You end up in a pit. From a pit to palace, you look as if the ray was shining. And from palace again to prison, say, ah, now only you did this life. Now only you did this life. Ah, no, this is your own. Is be, is be careful. Ah, there, is something, there is something responsible. This is your own. Ah, no, no. Some tea day on that. Some tea day on that. That on a church that they see. That they see for that on a church. That they see. Something must show. Something day on that. Ah, only you. Now only you day. But the Bible says, when the father was about to pass on, he assembled them. And when he was blessing them, he talks about Joseph. He said the, the archers, they shot at him. But if you read the Bible, there was no physical place where physical archers shot at Joseph. But the repeated temptation that man went through every day. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The repeated temptation. Have you ever, have you, let me say this to the men that are in the house. Have you ever gone through such temptation? A repeated temptation for a woman who was pretty, who was available, and she's also rich. She has every tendency to promote you. For her to wake up in the morning and say, JJ, JJ, where are you? You know, his name was Joseph Jacob. So JJ is an abbreviation. For a woman who is not your husband, who is not your wife, I mean, wake up in the morning and say, you know, Use a romantic voice, a bedroom voice to be calling JJ in the morning. The Bible says it was a repeated issue. And I sat down. I said, this man is qualified to be one of the board of directors in my life. I listed them. That when it comes to handling inferiority complex, I look at Gideon. I look at Gideon. He's one of the board of directors in my life. When it comes to handling repeated temptation, I look at Joseph. When it comes to placing God ahead of politics, I look at Daniel. When it comes to taking risk in life, I look at Esther. Praise the name of the Lord. God placed these characters in the Bible so that we can learn. So that was the physical archer. That was the archer that shot at him. The Bible says flee. Every uncleanness. Flee every filthiness. But at the end of the day, he was glorified. Even as the name of God was glorified in the land of Egypt, he was promoted because he chose to be godly. Praise the name of the Lord. He spent many years in prison. That alone would, would, is enough to harden his heart. That alone is enough to harden his mind and turn his mind against God and said, go and ask him, is it the same God that we should be expecting or we should look at for uh, 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 another one? If he says he's God in my life, why is my life like this? But the Bible says at the end of the day, it turned the situation around. Do you know the believer passed through challenges? The unbeliever also passed through challenges. But do you know the difference? The one of the believer always ends in glory. That is the reason why whatsoever thing you are going through today, don't look at it as the end. God sees the future better than you see the past. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And number three, godliness ensure. Godliness guarantee prosperity. Prosperity, enjoying abundant supply and good success in every area of our life. Prosperity. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9, the Bible says that Jesus Christ became poor that we might be rich, might become rich. He was, you know, he wasn't just somebody that was born poor. He became poor that you and I might be rich. We are not talking about spiritual riches now, physical riches. Because in the context where I quoted in 2 Corinthians 8 9, it wasn't talking about spiritual money there. It was talking about physical offering that was raised by the church in Jerusalem. And we raised for the church in Jerusalem. The scripture says Jesus became poor that we might become rich. 
And when you read Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 48, you will discover four things that define absolute poverty. Four things that define absolute poverty. The Bible talks about hunger. It talks about taste. It talks about nakedness. And it talks about lack of things. And anywhere you see these things in operation, it defines absolute poverty. And these four things were seen on the life of Jesus Christ. There was a time he cried, I am tasty. The clothes he put on, the Bible says that the army, they tore it, they divided it among, they even cast lot for it. He put these things upon himself so that you and I can enjoy abundance. That is the reason why when you are praying, this is what you should stand upon. Are you hearing me? This is what you should stand upon. You have a business and it looks as if there is ill wind. Stand upon this and say, Lord, you became poor that I might be rich. You have given me your abundance. You know the reason why God bless us with abundance? So that we can build him a dwelling place. So that we can build him a dwelling place. The Bible opens with God dwelling with man in the Garden of Eden. And in Revelation, it closes with Jesus Christ coming to dwell with man again in the new Jerusalem. So today, that you see the account of Moses. All the works they gather from Egypt, they use it to build God a tabernacle. True of course. They use it to build God a tabernacle. There was a time that God also called Solomon. They assembled all their works. They use it to build God a dwelling place. But in the New Testament, God does not live in a building made with hand. He lives in you and me. So how do we build him a dwelling place? By taking that resources and use it for the propagation of the gospel. For soul winning. And that is the reason why everyone that contributed in our tract, and that will continue to contribute because we will still be asking for tract printing. The Lord will bless you abundantly in the name of Jesus. Those instruments, they are speaking. They are speaking. Even while you are sleeping, those instruments are speaking. Praise the name of the Lord. So, that is the reason why he bless us. The Bible said in 2 Corinthians, 2 Chronicles 26, 5, the Bible says, as Uzziah sought the Lord, he prospered. Everyone who is godly, who seeks the face of the Lord, who is, you know, consult his word and seek his face, must surely live in prosperity. I say, must surely live in prosperity. In Joshua 1 8, where we also read in our service today, the Bible talks about good success. Meditating and acting on the word equals prosperity. Praise the name of the Lord. And lastly, godliness ensures perpetuity. God promised those who serve him a long life. I believe it. And everyone who also believe it, who stand upon that word, will also have it. He said, your goodness and your mercy shall follow me. In all the days of my life, I shall dwell in the presence of the Lord. He didn't say, in all the days while I'm on earth alone. He said, in all the days of my life. That goes a long way to tell you and I that what we even call death is just a transition from one place to the other. Man doesn't really die. It only changes location. This earth suit, we cannot use it to inherit the kingdom of God. It's for earth here alone. So perhaps, maybe someone close to you may have passed on some years ago who know Christ. Beloved, the person is not dead, he's asleep. In Thessalonians, it was spared out. Praise the name of the Lord. So there is long life. There is long life. There is long life perpetuity. There is long life. In Psalm 91, Verse 14 and verse 16, the Bible talks about long life. Long life. In Psalm 34, verse 12 and 13, the Bible says, He that desires long life and loveth many days. So it is the promise of God unto you and I. Godliness, living for God, guarantees this also. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible says, Those who love, who love life, who love life, they should refrain their lips. From speaking God. Peter was quoting that same portion in the Old Testament. In other words, if it is not possible, the Lord wouldn't have asked us. He wouldn't have said, no, it is possible. Godliness guarantees perpetuity. More life in our days and more days in our life. Praise the name of the Lord. More life in our days and more days in our life. Don't sit down and, and, don't sit down and start reminiscing over death. Don't romance the thought of death. If the enemy plant it in your heart now, rebuke it. Eh? You don't overcome thought by thought. When he plant it in your heart, say it is written, I shall live and not die. 
when you are embarking on a journey and he's telling you that your vehicle will be involved in an accident, tell that same voice that, look, he will give his angels charge over me, lest I dash my foot against the stone. Don't entertain it. Don't entertain it. Don't romance it. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. And in conclusion, there is a connection between obedience and godliness. There is connection between obedience or godliness and God's promise of long life. In Ephesians chapter 6 verse 1 to 3, the Bible says that God himself admonished you and I and said we should honor our parents. We live in a generation who plays down on God's covenant. It is a covenant. It's a heavy covenant of blessing. That as a child, honor your parents. No matter how old you are, your parents are your parents. I see young people today, you know, who doesn't, you know, when it comes to the issue of showing honor and respect to the elderly, they see it as a trash. They said it's no longer fashionable. In the mechanic workshop some few days ago, a little boy in the mechanic workshop, I sat down there, he came and he met me. He walked past. After some time, I called him. And we meet. So you cannot greet. You don't, you don't know. Can't, you don't know how to greet. He said, good morning. I said, good morning. You said, good morning, sir. And when the electrician came, I told him, he was asking, where are, how many of the boys are around? I mentioned their names, the two of them. He called the same person, called and called. He didn't respond. He now carried broom, he was sweeping. I was angry. I said, look, Paul, these children, they are here, not just for you to pass the stick again. Teach them morals. A master will come to the workshop before you, an apprentice, and you will go and sit down and be doing something else. It's common among believers today. It's common among believers. When last did you hear from your parents? Sometimes you can live in the city and use a recharge card of 6,000 naira in a week. 100 naira recharge card you can't send to your mother. You can't send to your father. He says he's an unbeliever. And so, he that brought the venison will receive the blessing. The Bible didn't say whether they are believers or not. The covenant, the promise, the commandment with the promise is honor your father and your mother. It is godly. To stand up in the presence of the elderly for them to take your seat. When you do that, longevity is your portion. When you see an elderly person carrying heavy load, you know you can raise that head. Carry. It is not old fashioned. Even if you are wearing human hair, that does not stop you from carrying a load from an elderly person. Godliness is profitable. You pray for your mother in law to die, you will become a mother in law one day. It's true. There are ladies today who say they don't want to marry a young man that has a mother-in-law, that has a mother. Because all they have heard is that mother-in-laws are bad. But my testimony is this. When the Bible says that when the ways of, when the ways of a man pleases God, he makes his enemy to be at peace. I thought and said, look, he, he, God does not only make my enemy to be at peace. He gave me good mother-in-law. I have a wonderful mother-in-law. Praise the name of the Lord. Godliness. There is a connection between obedience and long life. When we walk with the Lord in the light of His word, let's rise to our feet. What a faith, glory sheds on our way. Why we do His good will, He abides with us and with all who we trust in.
prayers is better than their cause. Their blessings, your mother's blessing is better than her cause. Oh, trust and obey. came to you today to keep a date with us I'd like you to follow us on Facebook at CGMI Penel Chapel and our YouTube channel subscribe and like and God bless you in Jesus name